if we want to meet our obligation as a generation, as a civilization, as a nation, which is to create communities for our children that provide them with the same opportunities for dignity and enrichment and prosperity and good health as the communities that our parents gave us. We've got to start by protecting our environmental infrastructure, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the wildlife, the fisheries, the public lands, those things that are not reducible to private property, but by their nature are the property of all of us, the commons, the commonwealth, the landscapes, the waterways that connect us to the 10,000 generations of human beings that lived before there were laptops, and that ultimately connect us to God. And God talks to human beings through many factors, through each other, who organize religion through the great books of those religions, through wise people, through art and music and literature and poetry. But nowhere with such detail and grace and color and joy as through creation. And when we, when we destroy a species, when we destroy a special place, we're diminishing our capacity to sense the divine, understand who God is and what our own potential is as human beings. Father Martin once told me that the definition of sin is an injury to another human being or to God, to our relationship with God. And my children are gonna grow up in a world where they will never see the kind of explosions of color and butterflies that I saw every time I walked into my garden. As 80 or 90% of the butterflies are gone, the flying insects will never hear the songbirds that I heard. They're not gonna see that in their lifetime. They're unaware of it. And it's like God is a tapestry and he's talking to us from all of these different vectors and we're pulling threads out of that capacity and it is such a crime against our children. And I think... I think we deserve a president in this country who cares about these things and who talks about these things to the American people.